Alright then, let's get into it. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Yes, friends, what's poppin'? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well. I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News, of course, the daily, daily, daily series here on the channel where I reflect on everything regarding Chelsea, giving you my thoughts on it, more importantly, asking for yours. Boys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, the international break is nearly at an end. Rejoice! But stuff's happened in the international break. Let's think about it. Well, lately, Gareth Southgate has upset me by not utilising Cole Palmer, though many Chelsea fans will be happy he was rested. Meanwhile, in the under-21 level, Noni Madweke is absolutely tearing stuff apart. How are we just going to fit him in to the Chelsea team, I mean? Mudrik is the hero of Ukraine, sending them into the Euros. Absolutely incredible, sensational scenes there of a late goal from him. And a Chelsea striker named Romelu Lukaku executed a world-class assist, then mugged us off to the media. Also, as well, Chelsea's home and away kit have been leaked now, and yes... Horror. So I apologise about that. I will put it in front of your eyes. Thanks for joining me. Strap yourselves in. Get comfortable. Thank you for liking the video because that helps us content creators out. Tap of your thumb. Click of a finger. Takes a second. You are welcome to subscribe. Should you choose to do so, you should <clears throat> hit that sweet, sweet bell, baby. All right, let's get into it. Let's start off with Cole Palmer. Many Chelsea fans will be happy that he wasn't utilised over the international break and was rested, but me, as an England fan, while he was in form, I wanted to see him be played in the England team. And of course, over this international break, England didn't win either of their games, and there was moments they could have brought on a creative player, heck, a good right-sided player, to score a goal or create something. It's a perfect opportunity for Cole Palmer. Now, I said this on my other channel, Football Yannick, where I talk about non-Chelsea stuff. I actually reacted to that game, the England draw with Belgium. Check out Football Yannick if you want some non-Chelsea content from yours truly. Uh, but with Cole Palmer, I'm going to give Southgate the benefit of the doubt, even though I'm not happy with the England gaffer. I think he's done good work in a lot of ways as England manager, but I'm not generally pleased with him. Anyway, giving him the benefit of the doubt, he did wax lyrical about Cole Palmer. I wonder, and this is me massively playing devil's advocate here, maybe, maybe, he thinks, right, well, I know Cole Palmer's really, really good. I'm going to call him up and bring him on the plane anyway. But what I do need to do here is I need to look at Jared Bowen. I need to look at Anthony Gordon, you know, see if they could push themselves into the squad. Maybe in his head he already thinks, right, Cole Palmer's going to be on the plane because he's just too good to not at the moment. He's not a starter for England, as things stand, but he's this squad player that you've got to bring. A bit of a Conor Gallagher sort of level, even though, yes, of course, I expect Cole Palmer to ascend to a really, really high level eventually. I mean, he's doing pretty ruddy good now. So maybe, maybe Southgate thinks, right, I need to use this opportunity to look at your Bowens, etc., your Madisons and your Gordons. Uh, and in terms of playing, I want Jude Bellingham and Foden on the pitch, my starters, because I want the more time they can play together, developing chemistry, the better. And then maybe the fringe players, maybe the squad rotational players you don't need to utilise here. That's me massively giving him the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, let me know what you think about Cole Palmer not featuring in this international break. Let's move on and talk about happier times. Misha Mudrik with a great goal late on to qualify Ukraine for the Euros. A great, great story. And say it quietly, ladies and gentlemen, but the boy might be in form. His confidence might be back. I don't want to jinx it, but, you know, only so recently he scored an absolute wonder goal. Of course, the ball he took off Conor Gallagher's feet and dribbled round and took it around the keeper. An excellent goal. I mean, he's been looking pretty good, more central for Chelsea. And generally, even when he's not scoring, he's been quite effective. So to take that form into the international break, score the decisive, iconic goal to qualify uh, Ukraine for the Euros is massive. His name will be in the headlines. Of course, the big story is Ukraine going to the Euros and, you know, the abhorrent stuff they're having to deal with in their home country at the moment. But in terms of the guy, the young man who's had troubles, who's come to the Premier League, who's got the price tag and he's not really done it and has found some form and he's, he's had the moment. He's been waiting for that moment for Ukraine and that is the moment. The goal that qualifies Ukraine for the Euros from a playoff, that is a moment. So that, plus a couple of wonder goals for Chelsea, doing good, doing good. Fingers crossed, slowly developing, quietly, Mikhail Madrid feeling pretty damn good about that. 
baby! Anyway, let's move on. From baller to baller to baller, Noni Madweke winning man of the match for England under 21s with two goals and two assists. And both his goals, by the way, I really loved. One of them was a deft finish where he sort of rolled it into the corner, literally put his foot over the boot. And one was an excellent sort of longer range, harder hit, but breaking the lines, piercing through defenders. Now, here's your caveat. It was Luxembourg's under 21 team. Now, no matter what country you support or your nation is, when your first team, your senior team's playing Luxembourg, you're thinking, that's when Cristiano Ronaldo rubs his hands together and makes sure he starts even when he's uh, injured to get the goal tally up. So you can imagine that under 21s aren't a high level. England rightfully slapped him up, scored a bunch of goals, like seven odd goals or something. Four goal involvements for Nani Madweke, man of the match. Look, he wasn't doing knee slides, he wasn't even celebrating, he was scoring great goals and just running back. Like, great mental attitude, you know what I mean? But he was cooking, as you'd expect him in, or hope him to. You know, if you saw that game, I was Luxembourg, Nonny starting, oh, okay, well, you know, goal and assist. That'll be, you know, about par and let's move and get back and continue. How about two goals, two assists? Now we're talking! Especially when both goals are different as well. Feeling good about Nonny Madweke performing for under 21 level very, very well. Look, I don't think... <laughs> He's not going to get on the plane to uh, the first team for the Euros. It's just can't, you know. It's, w when Cole Palmer's the backup right winger, you're really going to struggle. I mean, <laughs> the fact that Bakayo Saka is so young, it's going to be tough for Nani Madweke. But the thing is, he's such a great player. So I want to talk about it a little bit. Where do you fit him in, right? Because at the moment, say, like, we're not talking about a new strike. Let's just talk about this season. So, you know, players we've got, and, and Nkunku's still injured, and we haven't signed a new striker like Osimhen or something. You go, right, well, let's just say Nico Jackson starts up top. He's getting better and better. His discipline's getting better. His offside discipline's getting better. He's just developing nicely. Nico Jackson up top. Of course, of course, Colt Palmer on the right. And for the moment, I don't think Gallagher's in great form at the moment, actually. I think that's quietly been dipping, which is fair enough. He's been hella cooked this season. Mudrik, as the number 10, it's just such a shame that we can't get Nani Madwe. He just seems like such a right winger. Do you know what I mean? As does Cole Palmer. We had so many left wingers for so long, or players that are predominantly left wingers that all want to play on the left, that... You get to this point now and you're like, can't we just have one good one? Of course you could say Mudrick, but I think Mudrick's playing better because he's occupying central positions. That's what I personally feel. So it's just such a shame that, like, maybe Nonny or Cole can play left wing. Maybe they can both start uh, and then both float over to the right to create an overload. Maybe there's some tactics that Pochettino can do there. Chance will be a fine thing. I'm jesting. Pochettino has historically had good attacking tactics. It's just been tough this season. Still, we all want to see it, right? We all want to see Nani play because he's good. Anyway, um, hopefully he'll stick around and we don't loan him or anything because he's just good enough, isn't he? He's just good enough, he needs time to develop, but you could say that for every friggin' player in the Chelsea team. But generally, generally feel good vibes for the international break. Malo Gusto was rested from illness, he's come back. Um, Cesare Cassidy scored a goal for his level as well. And Romelu Lukaku looks good against England. So we're going to look at the kits in just a moment. But Romelu Lukaku, of course, put on an absolute Karejma slash Modric assist for the second goal against England yesterday. Both goals scored by Tielemans, by the way. Caveat, that midfield from Belgium is looking pretty good, I think. Like, if they have a midfield of, you know, De Bruyne, he will still play for Belgium, Tielemans and uh, Amadou Anana. I think that's really functional. I think... Belgium, even though the golden generation is over, I think they could quietly be a very, very good team. Anyway, Romelu Lukaku, one of the most frustrating footballers in the world, not least because he behaves like a colossal penis sometimes, but also he can be amazing and he can be really bad. Look, I've long nailed my colours to the mast of this. I think he was sensational for Inter when we bought him, and though he wasn't the first choice, I was still excited that a great player was coming to Chelsea. In hindsight, it was a bad move, not just because of the character profile and the cost, but also the play style profile. It was a bad idea and it wasn't thought through. Hopefully now we've got sporting directors, we think this through a little bit more. But he's showing he can do that down that right channel. He can, you know, he had an amazing game for Belgium against Brazil, was in 2018. He can do that, and that assist he played to Tielemans, he basically broke down the right-hand side, and you're thinking, well, he can't do anything here because he's not Vinicius Junior, and uh, or whoever right winger you want to say instead, and um, there's no one with him. But he holds the ball up well, and he just plays this beautiful outside-the-boot pass. It's just a perfect assist, right? And you just think, Ah! That's a Chelsea striker! 
you know, what a senior Chelsea striker that you know, believes in themselves, which is, uh, look, he's also on the hella money. That's never going to work. He's not going to come back to Chelsea. That naturally, naturally that question is being asked again. Could Chelsea convince him to come back? And maybe he'll be thinking, what are my options now? Well, Roma might not qualify for the Champions League. Um, amazing story with Bologna, by the way. Open City, yeah. And maybe Roma can't buy him. Maybe he has a choice. Maybe somehow he has a choice between Fernabache, Saudi, obviously, and having one more crack with Chelsea it would be the Pochettino gets on the phone with him or a new manager. Obviously, there's a whole new team around him, bar like James Chilwell and Thiago Silva or something. So maybe there won't be that much bad blood. Maybe there could be a meeting, a big boys meeting. But I don't know, man. I don't think it could ever happen. So I saw these you know, questions on social media. For me, it's not possible. The bridges have burned. Of course, he was asked in the Sky Sports interview after the game, they were like, you know, Romelu, your performance was excellent today. Do you have a bit of a sort of... I understand what the journalist was doing. He's saying when you come back to England, do you feel like you've got a bit of a point to prove or you want to always play well? Not because of just Chelsea, because, you know, West Brom, Everton, Manchester United and Chelsea, the vast, vast majority of his career, he was playing in the Premier League. So it's not just a Chelsea thing, but he says, ha you'll have to ask Chelsea and laugh. So people have been like, what does he mean by that? Is he trying to mug us off somehow? Because it feels like it. Or is he trying to indicate they want me to play well so I get sold for more money? Or is he just saying it meaning nothing? It is a little bit like the Will Smith meme. Keep my club's name out of your goddamn mouth. Even though he's currently employed by Chelsea. So, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. <sighs> it is rough, isn't it? I just, I would have loved it to work for Lukaku, but he's just such a knobber. Like, irreversible damage. Like, that, we will look back at time at that unsanctioned Sky Italia interview and just think, like, what are you, what are you doing? Anyway, then let me know what you think. That is the International Break Roundup. Comment down below your thoughts and let's look at this disgusting Nike abomination. <laughs> So, footy headlines has now leaked both the Chelsea home kit and the away kit for next season. Um, people might like the home kit. I don't actually mind like the wavy, like, sort of tie-dye lines on it. Of course, it says Infinite Athlete, which is incorrect. We won't have Infinite Athlete next season, so ignore the sponsor. Look at the colours. I mean, again, again, but I think... On these mannequins, they both look gross. But I've often thought that about kits when they're leaked like this and the design. Like, I think they're deliberately almost briefed to footy headlines and leaks. So uh, they often look better on the players and um, often look better with new sponsors and stuff. But I'm really struggling here. If I designed a kit of how I wanted to, it would not look like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I miss the kits, like, I really like the, the the Lampard kits that we had. I think the third kit with the weird orange collar. It was out there, and people loved it or hated it, but that was fine because it's the third kit. The third kit can be a little bit, like, crazy. Like, ooh, some people love it, some people hate it. It's a talking point. It's a third kit. And then we had the collar white mod away kit, which I really liked. Um, we had a few, Nike... Nike hasn't exclusively done us dirty. I've got a bunch of Nike kits hanging uh, behind the camera there. You know, I've got the I've got this season's first and third kit without the sponsor because I thought it was a unique op uh, opportunity. I've incidentally got the training top as well, the Trivago, the white one. I think it looks really nice. Um, I got the yellow one from last season. You know, where, uh, it's got the big free on, but the yellow with the black stripes. I actually think that looks really good, personally. Um, you know. It's not all been bad. Uh, people romanticise about the Adidas days, but I think also that's somewhat romanticism about just times when we won football matches. So that's nice. You associate, you know, good times and the kits become better. Anyway, look, from these leaks, and these leaks, like I said, never make them look overly sexy. They look pretty terrible. <laughs> So let me know what you think about the new Chelsea kits. Comment down below. I'll be very keen on reading your thoughts, like I always am. Um, thank you again for joining me and supporting the content. And if you're yet to support it, ruddy support it, eh? Like and subscribe. All right, gang. Hope to see you back here tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves. Peace.